Thanks for joining us. I'm Marlon Bowling with you as we watch our ag commodity trade open up today on a Thursday. And it's a fairly big day. Uh, every time we have a Thursday, that means it's Export Sales Day. And indeed it is. We have Rich Nelson on the line of Allendale Incorporated right now. And uh, Rich, your thoughts on the export sales numbers as we uh, take a look at them here. You know, overall, on the corn side, 1.3 million tons were posted for both old and new crop combined. That was more or less within the trade expectations, so we're going to call that neutral, but still keeping up a, a generally good pace here. Uh, as far as soybeans, 637,000 tons for old and new crop, uh, old and new crop combined. This one might be considered maybe a little disappointing by some, but it was within the trade expectations. And also, normally, we do see soybean sales drop off, so probably not going to get the trade too excited here. Uh, soybean looks like 136,000 tons there. Did have the numbers maybe a little weaker on the old crop sales than one to see. As far as soy oil, about 15,000 tons there. And wrapping up on the wheat side, we did see numbers for only old, only the current crop, I should say, at about 383,000 tons. That was also within trade expectations. So most of these products neutral across the board here. Now, we, <clears throat> we also have numbers for grain sorghum and cotton and rice and the grain sorghum. A very, very small 100 tons, and I noted that was uh, for the old crop sales. And it uh, was in part due to sales to Eritrea. Oh. So anyway, it all worked out to um, uh, 100 tons overall, including some uh, net reductions. We did have rice at 19,500 tons. And then you had uh, cotton, upland cotton, totaling 280,800 running bales for the old and new crop uh, marketing years there. So it looks like overall, um, most of the numbers were going to be under what we had last week, although that corn number was, as you mentioned, uh, fairly strong over there. When you look at the overall market makeup, uh, we do see the corn a little higher overnight once again. Looks like we're up about three cents or so, three and a half, in fact, on September, while the uh, soybean trade backed up by about five cents overnight. So uh, why the difference there? Uh, there's got to be more to it here than uh, just these export sales numbers. Why? You know, I think there are actually two things here. Number one, of course, uh, the discussion about uh, maybe this tariff issue on the U.S. side as far as the uh, potential for a 25 percent tariff instead of just 10 percent now on the, China, on the China issue. So we're not getting our soybean uh, issue uh, clarified or, or cleared up here yet. And also in today's numbers, we do have to point out on the old crop numbers, they were a little weak for just old crop specifically, and that did include reductions for unknown, about 316,000 tons, as well as previously ordered for, uh, product from China. 120,000 tons. But if we look at our wheat prices overnight, <clears throat> very interesting here. We have Chicago September wheat, eight and a quarter higher again, Rich, at 566 and a half right now. That would be uh, about seven cents off our overnight low. And in Kansas City wheat, here we have September trading nine and a half higher at 573 and a quarter. And even Minneapolis wheat last night had uh, September seven and three quarters higher at 6.15 and three quarters. So even though the uh, export sales numbers were kind of uh, uh, mediocre, I guess, on the wheat side, the market fundamentally is very strong here overall. Uh, Rich, I'll bring you back here in a moment. I want to take a look at the beef and the pork export sales numbers as well. We'll be back with Rich right after this. Let's go back to our talk with Rich Nelson of Allendale Incorporated. And I want to go back to our export sales numbers that came out a short time ago here from USDA. And we covered the grain and crop market side on the beef and pork. This is very intriguing here. I want to take a look at these numbers with you, Rich. On the beef side, remember last week we had under 5,000 tons that were sold nationwide. And this week they really came back. Uh, still 17,000 600 tons. It's not stellar, but it is pretty good. Uh, that was up, uh, of course, a lot from last week. It was up 36% from our established four-week average now. Uh, now, that includes 16,200 tons for this calendar year of 2018, and then there were 1,400 tons of it moved into 2019. Uh, and those, by the way, were all from Mexico. Now, on the pork side, now, that was an outstanding number there, 35,700 tons for the current marketing year. Uh, and then another 500 tons for 2019. <clears throat> Those uh, sales for next year were earmarked for South Korea. Interesting here, Rich, where we had out of the 35,700 tons of pork sold for this year, that was 69% higher than last week. Biggest buyer? Mexico. And they bought 16,300 tons all by themselves. 
kind of interesting how they uh, uh, position themselves in these NAFTA trade talks, but yet they continue to be a key buyer here of U.S. pork anyway. And that sure is right. And uh, I mean, some people have suggested that when Mexico did its retaliatory tariffs on on U.S. here uh, uh, against our steel and aluminum tariffs, uh, that they also created a quota for about 350,000 metric tons of allowable product, uh, excluding this uh, the the, uh, the tariff issue. So uh, some people would suggest perhaps this is uh, Mexico buyers, uh, Mexican buyers, jumping in, loading the boat, so to speak, before uh, the uh, the tariff rate quota is is peaked, and then therefore they hit the new tariff which apply after that point here. Ah, so there may be a little loophole in there that they can utilize at least for a while. Uh, maybe, hopefully, they'll get some agreements worked out then. Huh? Exactly. So it does give us a little room here. So we, that's why we aren't seeing this major drop in, in uh, sales. In fact, uh, total sales on, on the U.S. side to, total, uh, to all buyers, 4.6% over last year. So still overall good pace. Not great, but good right now. Now, uh, a day or two ago, we had these uh, jobs uh, numbers that came out from the U.S. here, and they were very good again. They added uh, well over 200,000 jobs again in July. And uh, at times, analysts will say that that would be supportive normally to the beef market. Uh, how do you feel about that this week? Is that going to be propping up the beef trade? You know, in general, we have seen a, a small uh, ability for the U.S. consumer to accept more uh, meat total than last year at this time and still not break the price end of things here. So at least on the B side, we have seen a small demand increase due to this rising economy. Uh, we can't say that same thing maybe for chicken. Uh, some cuts of pork are having some problems, but certainly on the B side, overall demand increases are going on right now, and we can't have to, have to respect that. And we can take a look at the beef uh, cutout values yesterday on the afternoon update that came in from USDA. Uh, they were both going backwards. Uh, we had choice cuts down 52 cents yesterday afternoon, and we had select cuts valued about 80 cents lower uh, at 197.58. So we'll keep an eye on that. But uh, Rich, good to hear from you again this morning. Thank you, sir. We're about ready to open things up. So uh, good luck trading today. Thank you so much. Rich Nelson of Allendale Incorporated in McHenry, Illinois.